All right. So share with our audience who you are. Mm -hmm. So my name is John Neyman, and uh, I'm the director of the Urban Studies Institute at Georgia State University in the Andrew Young <laughs> Policy School. Excellent. And yesterday you had a presentation. Mm -hmm. In that presentation you mentioned that in a decade or so jobs today will be phased yeah. out. Yeah. So uh, my first question to you is how does mindset and training need to change in order for uh, those in the future to stay relevant as far as jobs are concerned? Yeah, good question. And I don't think we're ready for it. Mm. And I don't think we're ready for it across the board, you know? Okay. So, so there are estimates that are a bit wild, maybe a little bit exaggerated, that 85% of all the jobs that in 2030 don't exist yet. Oh, gosh. And uh, <clears throat> it may be an exaggeration, but it'll be over 50%. So that's that's harsh enough right? right harsh reality enough and and we don't know what kind of jobs those are mm. uh, they will involve technology mm -hmm. and they will involve a lot of a lot of uh, digital technology especially but what we do know and this is really important what we do know is that most of us right in the workforce will be freelancers or have our own businesses. Oh, so sole proprietors, yeah, as they call them sometimes in tax jargon. Yes. Uh, so one person companies mm -hmm. or freelancers, that's most what most of us will be doing. And right. what does that mean? That goes directly to your question, I think, mm -hmm. because it means it requires two things. It, it requires an entrepreneurial spirit. Yes. It's not like I'm going to start a company and what kind of a company. Mm -hmm. No, what, what does entrepreneurial spirit mean? Mm -hmm. It means a, a, a certain flexibility yes. and drive mm -hmm. and, and uh, creativity to get what you want mm -hmm. and to do what you want. It also will involve continuous training. You know? So the whole idea that you study for this, or you train for that, and this is going to be your profession. Forget it. It's gone. It's you know, obsolete. It's, it's obsolete. Yeah. And and yet the educational system, I would I would say from K twelve through universities, mm -hmm. and I'm at a university, and I think we're not really doing that. You know, so so because we're preparing for the unknown. Yes. In a sense. Yes. We're, we're yeah. So, 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 what that in part means, you know, that uh, what's we've, okay. you know, this debate, what's the value of a liberal arts mm -hmm. kind of education that yes. makes people flexible? You just train their brain muscles and mm -hmm. and make them adaptable and creative and thinking out of the box. That's all very important. But there's also what's also really important <laughs> is an understanding mm -hmm. and embracing. For, for young folks, yeah. this idea that it's not a particular job for you waiting at it. You, in a way, you have to invent it. Yeah, you have to invent it. You know, and and it used to be that senior writers in college is people. Oh, what am I going to do? I'll be looking for a job for a couple of months or half a year and find my job. Uh, if you were going to wait for it, mm -hmm. you know, it may not happen. Now, that's a lot of stress. It is. It is. Because and they're preparing for the unknown. Yes. And then when they get to that point, preparing for the future, having the mindset to do basically what it yeah. will take yes. to be successful exactly. and exactly. to be able to support themselves. Yeah. And you also talked a bit about the disparity in income mm. in Atlanta is larger than any major city in yeah. the U.S. According to some measures, yeah. So what, how do we get in this position? What are we doing wrong here in, in Atlanta? Well, first let me say, the re so if you compare Atlanta to, mm -hmm. for example, San Francisco. Yeah. San Francisco is also very unequal. Okay. Uh, but in San Francisco, the bottom end of the distribution yeah. is less. So the, the tail end of the income distribution is less. Mm -hmm. Here, it's, it's very big. So, so that yeah. means the, the, the people who are deprived, mm -hmm. that share of the population is much bigger. There's a large poor population here, you know. Uh, just a quick anecdote, if, if I may. Oh, yes. Absolutely. So, I do a lot of work in India, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been working there on and off for 20 years yeah. in cities. That country has its challenges, for sure. Yeah. And a good friend and person I worked with, uh, worked with him for 15 years, came to visit the U.S. for the first time. He had been to the U.K., he had been in the Gulf States. Comes to the U.S. and it's Atlanta. I invited him. And after two days, 
I said to him, driving around and having a look at the city, and we had our discussions, he gave a presentation, he's into real estate research. And I said to him, so, I know this is Atlanta, it was your first time in the US, so what strikes you the most? Mm. And he said, the homeless people. Wow. It was you that know, visible to him. It was that visible to him. And I, you know, sometimes you just don't forget things, and right. it's one of these moments that I think, okay, so here's a guy, he's from a country that overall is not nearly as affluent mm -hmm. as the US, right. or his city, Mumbai, as mm -hmm. Atlanta, and he sees all these homeless people. And wow. something's wrong. That's overwhelming. Something so how, is how wrong. How do we you overcome know? that? Do you, know how, well, do you have any thoughts about how we overcome this? It's, it's, there's no simple answer to it. Yes. But I'm convinced mm -hmm. that you must look ahead. Yes. You must look ahead, you know. Mm -hmm. And in social policies, there's way too much of, yeah, we should have done this or that right. back then. When they started to talk about the Beltline, we mm -hmm. should have done affordable housing, but we didn't. Should have, would have, could have. Yeah. yeah. And so, so you have to move forward, look forward. but this economy, and to get back to the economy, it's changing so quickly, right. so quickly. <laughs> You've got to look ahead. At what's and, going on. Yeah, so you must, you must ask yourself the question, how do we empower mm -hmm. kids, right. teenagers, adolescents, young adults, the whole trajectory, how do we prepare them for this future? Right. We've got a lot of work ahead. Yeah. We've got a lot of yeah. work And so, so, yes, I think education is hugely important, but everywhere, not just in Atlanta. Right. You've got but, some work. <laughs> but you you got some work and, yeah. and uh, you know it's well, it's I think it's possible to have this debate and think yes. about these issues and think about the uh, challenges and the policies mm -hmm. without thinking about race. Right. It's possible. It's possible. And the reality is, of course, for a lot of people to mm -hmm. see and to experience that race also matters. Yes. In 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 this city especially and well that's a whole that's a whole other <laughs> all, conversation. And all other layer <laughs> in conversation but but, we'll, we'll, uh, but we'll everybody everybody yes. is who's growing up and and who's preparing to it at a certain age join the workforce mm -hmm. better realize I'm convinced of that you know yes. that 10 years from now already it will look very different yes from, yes. T from today from what it is yeah. today oh, so, well thank you so much we appreciate pleasure. you joining us yeah. thank you